Welcome to the Forbidden Frontier. Yeah, his channel is Can Am okay. Missing Project. It's 411. Uh, it's Dave Polites. He is an ex-cop, Bigfoot investigator, kind of stumbled into this. Basically, how he stumbled into this was he was looking up a missing person, asked the Forestry Service, looking up uh, information on a missing person, and he finds out that they don't have a database at all, which is insane. I don't believe it for a minute. Oh, well, a public. As my, as my wife pointed out, now this might have changed in Australia. Tell me if I'm wrong, Australian. Australia would say there are drownings when they were actually shark attacks. Like they'd call shark uh... attacks drowning to not, to, to keep the tourists coming. Oh, so, um, it might be as criminal. simple as money. I don't know why, but there's no way they don't have a data. Well, maybe there is. Our government's pretty incompetent, but they didn't have one. And then when he did a request for freedom of information request, he'd be denied and they wouldn't let him get certain information unless he's writing a book, all this crazy stuff. And he was just getting blocked everywhere for it, which made him more curious. I could see the other side of that, that like this guy is exploiting missing people especially since the investigation is over and people have completely given up and there's no answers having yeah. a guy set light on it again if the family doesn't want anything to do that he'll he'll back off right that's fair. uh but i'd most say regardless of intentions like it is good to put light back on a lot of these cases sometimes there are new information that pops up or somebody technology. finds out that technology that, that that could solve the cases it, it's great to have have these stories uh kind of come back into light these these a lot of these stories are 50 years old 60 years old there's a lot more that, that are a lot older i mean he's got stories that go back to the 1600s yeah and what he's looking for is patterns right and he's got these clusters and he has cluster maps there's pockets of similarities if that makes sense so there's sometimes there's special needs kids the boulder field boulder fields uh missing boots missing pieces of clothing uh finding the body miles away now, if it's an adult, it's a little more believable than three-year-old kids. And then there's just complete disappearances. There's kids showing up again with fuzzy memory and they're still alive. There's kids like being on top of mountains. There's weird coincidences. He would never give you a theory ever. He would just go, I'm just presenting to you what we know. You, you come up with a summation. And I think he was trying to stay away from the Bigfoot bugaboo thing, which I, I'm yeah. open to, by the way. But I understand that because he was trying to get the most years possible on this. Well, right? the book is written. If you if you read his first book, the stories are written just basic facts. That it's is, not like they are, yeah, fanciful. It's not a bunch of like editorialized context, like name, date, lost, here, found, not found. Like it's very straightforward. And it wasn't until very recently when Missing Four One One, the UFO connection, came out, where mm -hmm. he's like, yeah. "Okay, this is a possibility," and this is where he started kind of getting into possibilities. And he goes through a process where it's not animals, and these are just weird, like unexplained, bizarre disappearances. Like his most watched video is as a doctor who uh, went missing in I can't remember, I think it was Colorado. But this guy is an ex like thirty nine years old in great health had a GPS that was working, had a phone that was working, went out to snowboard, disappeared. They find him on a sheet of ice, right? That he fell down, but he's missing his shoes. He's missing his pants. He's got a helmet on his jacket's in his backpack. And what else is in his backpack is a perfectly operational GPS and phone that he could have used. They were getting bars. Dave police goes there and says, we got bars and he's 14.1 miles away from his trail there's even a reddit post from niece or nephew uh talking about like this this is just too weird and they just shut us down and that's just one example wait who's they the authorities what whatever local authorities that were there so a uh, sheriff's department okay. um yeah they have a database fbi mm -hmm. there's a lot of, there's yeah. a weird connection with some of these where the fbi gets involved sometimes before they were called they just like show up and the fbi is already there working on the case and you're like why would they just come and join this search randomly? I mean, these are creepy stories, too. I don't get creeped yeah. out by much in this world, you know, except for carnies. carnies. <laughs> Hands smell except like cabbage. Um, and the, no, and the uh, Dutch. Uh, we all have picked stories. We'll just We'd like to it. go first. Ladies I first. Like we're in go ahead, right now. <laughs> 
Good. <laughs> Who's going? You. I said ladies oh. first. Go what? ahead. <laughs> oh, I can. I just blocked out your voice. I'm sorry. Like that. Oh wow. You just make my wife. Uh, yes, my story <laughs> is a story about a two-year-old boy named Keith Parkins in 1952. It was in April. It was around... The, the family had gone up to their family's uh, ranch. Their mother's father had a ranch there, and they were going there for Easter. There was snow on the ground. In the morning of April 9th, Wednesday. Kids, it's three boys, it was six, five, and two. The two older boys took their younger brother out to the barn because there had just been a, a calf had just been born. They wanted to go look at it. So they were exploring the, the barn and they were exploring the ranch. And around 12 o'clock, midday, the mother called in the boy, said, Hey, come in. It's lunchtime. And only the two older boys came in. The mother asked the where the where's where's Keith? And they said, Oh, he went around the barn the long way. Okay. Went out to go look in the barn, he wasn't there. Looked around the barn, looked around the house, looked around the property, he was nowhere to be found. She immediately goes back inside, calls her husband Alan, says we can't I can't find Keith. They call the police, they get a search party going. It's friends, family. The, uh, the local authorities in uh, Ritter, this is in Oregon, uh, they get about 200 people together, and they're, they're not shambled, it's not running around looking for people, they, they're pretty, they're not super trained, but they knew what to do if somebody was missing, they st stood far, far enough apart so they could speak to each other, but not too close, they started searching the area, they're going out a couple miles, nothing, and this is pretty, this is uh, the countryside, this is rugged area outside of the farm again there's snow everywhere it's a hours pass the search started about two o'clock a few more hours pass the sun starts to go down the temperature starts to drop they're traveling out three miles four miles and when they get around four miles in the north eastern direction from the house they find a uh, children's footprints and this is again rugged terrain in the middle of the countryside like there's no reason why there should be kids footprints here they track these footprints for a few yards few maybe 20 yards and then they disappear they just stop they lose the trail there was no other prints though it was just no other prints just kids. just kids footprints and again this is 1952 the kids footprint is like a it's like a leather sole chew flat yeah and this is about where it was approximately four miles away wow they found this in the middle of the night so like this is into the a.m they find this they continue the search it's getting colder the temperature drops below freezing they're still out here uh a wider and wider area of search and they're they're worrying you know, at this point, they're they're worrying about finding a, a body now instead of uh, their son. And around about 6 a.m. in the morning, one of the family friends, Charles uh, Shu, was searching uh, an abandoned, or I guess an abandoned uh, wood, I guess where they were doing some wood cutting, uh, cutting down some trees, and they find... Keith's body, face down in the snow. He calls for Alan, which he happened to be a hundred yards away. Alan ran over, scooped up his son, and he noted that his body was frozen solid. Like it felt like completely stiff. Skin was pale white. Lips were completely blue. He picked him up, ran him four miles straight all the way back to the ranch where they had a helicopter come in. They took the took Keith to the hospital and Keith recovered. They were actually able to to get signs of life from him and wow. he, he woke up and asked for water. That was his first words. Now when when they asked him what happened, 
Keith didn't know. He's two years old. You know, they they can't really formulate a memory of what's going on. But he said a, a cat scratched him, and that was basically all he could really say. The question is, though, if you think about the location, I'll show you the location of where he was found. It is another six miles away from the footprints. In the same direction? No. Across. What? Over here. So about a nine mile round trip. They were his footprints, though? Did they confirm that? That all it was, all it was, was in How the was uh, in the report. He was two years old. Two years a two old. Two year old covered about nine miles in the span of eighteen hours ish. Les Stroud did Les Stroud, the Survivor Man. Mm -hmm. He yeah. he during one of his, uh, I think he does like a, a Bigfoot show. He hiked this. He went from point A, the ranch, to point B, footprints to see and couldn't do it within the time frame because the terrain was too rugged the area was too overgrown wow and that's the survivor man and that's the survivor man he literally Close is job. his job was to go from point a to point b yeah in rugged areas so he said he couldn't do it uh i have a couple of theories and i watched a great video on this his name is the ghost uh, what is his name here? I got notes on it, so I would I would encourage you to go watch it. The ghost, uh, the the mid the moonlit ghost did a vid on this, and he had a good cool name. good theory. He had a theory that he never went to the second location. A lot of people are saying, you know, their their theories are that he get kidnapped and dropped at this last location. Was he taken by a a cat of some sort, like a mountain lion or something? But he only had a few cuts on his shirt. His overalls were ripped, but that's about it. I feel like there would be more if there was a, a cat, a big cat would have taken him. His theory, and I, I kind of agree with it, is possibly he never went to the other location. Those footprints were maybe of, uh, of some kind of animal that looked similar to it. In the snow, maybe in the middle of the night, they were wanting to see his footprints. Um, Nate, the possibly, 50s, you said? yeah, yeah, it's the fifties, right. fifty-two. Possibly, he never even went to the first or the second location. He went straight to the th third location, which is still about four to five miles. A two-year-old traveling four to five miles on their own in the middle of rough terrain is still a stretch for me. Yeah. Knowing, yeah, you know, two-year-olds. So even I don't that trust that crazy. family friend. The guy who uh, found him. I don't trust that dude. Charles. Whoever found him. Yeah. Ma you think major so? sus. But that's yeah. that's I think that's like most the most down to earth theory on why he why he was found where he was found. But even that I think is a wild scenario to think of a two year old traveling the distance between these two locations. A family ranch and where he was found. That's a it's a a long way to go but I, i'm interested to see what you guys think so Ooh. theories so kid was going one direction was two years old had footprints then goes another direction for miles they find him still alive he got scratched by a cat how big of a cat what kind of a cat like a that's the cat? thing is he they asked him about these scratches and he said that a cat scratched him but that was all he had really probably a regular cat i feel like yeah if it that's was what a, any sort of a predator cat he'd it would have been more would have been gone yeah yep. been way more damage. yeah definitely a two-year-old by itself in the woods yeah yeah oh god yeah, I don't think so. that's time, a lot of time. abducted that is a long way to go in a long amount of time out in the elements how was it like was the weather good it was well, I said during over the night, below freezing. Okay, that it's weather in April, was not good. So early that's April, no. Yeah, that's very very no. bad weather. Weather was not good, and he's still alive. Yeah, uh, abducted. Something happened. Something. I happened. think abducted. Also, I think abducted. Are there caves near here? I wonder. Ooh, that's another one of those. Well, that's didn't you put up that thing of uh, does this match cave systems? 
There's a lot of caves. Here in Texas, there's a lot of caverns. A lot of hmm. caves. Back to David Polites. He actually did interview Keith. He's about he's in his late sixties now. Still around, still kicking it. They did oh. an interview together. So if you want to watch that, you can cool. look up that interview after the show. What do you got, X-ray girl? There's a man, uh, Reverend Maurice Demetz, who is. Oh, I know this doc. one. Yeah, he's a 84 year old man at the time, and um, he was very interested in gems and minerals and even was a member of the American Federation of Mineral Societies and Flat Irons Gem and Mineral Club. There okay. Rolls very off the very, very much so. Uh, so he is 84, so he is up there in age, and he actually has a, a blood disorder and arthritis, so he can't really move around very much, very well. And he goes to go rock hunting with his friend, uh, named David McSherry all the time and McSherry always has to help him get to places because it you know it hurts to walk around and where you find rocks is usually deep in the forest you know dangerous areas so one day in uh, April 29th 1981 they decide to go to the Pike National Forest uh, in Colorado now this forest is over a million acres, really big. And where they went, uh, called Rampart Range Road near Devil's Head Lookout, it's down a 38.4 mile road that's unpaved. So it's pretty deep in the woods. Okay. So McSherry and uh, Demetz go in. McSherry gets him settled in with his tools to go look for rocks. And then McSherry usually goes about no more than 50 yards away. So after a few hours, McSherry goes and tells uh, Demetz, um, start cleaning up. We're going to go in a couple minutes. And so McSherry goes back to his area, collects his things, takes about 15 minutes to put all his stuff away. And then he comes back. No sign of Demetz. There's also no sign of his tools. Yeah, it's so bag thinks, gone. Okay. Yep. So he thinks, oh, he probably just went to the truck, goes to the truck. He's not there. He goes searching, can't find anything, nothing whatsoever, no signs of him. So Question. that, yes. What was the di between the last time you saw him and when he was 15 missing? minutes. That's it. Okay. According to McSherry, little old Demetz who can't right. walk around very well should be pretty easy to find mm -hmm. so he goes and tells the sheriff at around 11 o'clock that night did you mention they, he was like 50 yards away from his part not even that yeah so, so even their close. distance no. they were yeah. they were within shouting distance of each yeah. other all right go on so no worries no worries so uh they tell he tells the sheriff uh douglas county sheriff that night and uh they send search and rescue and they searched for five days a pretty, you know, you know, using the grid method, pretty thorough. And they couldn't find any signs of him. The dogs even couldn't find a scent. That's weird. In that area. That's on the I, list. That's on the list. That is I'm on getting the list. Shivers yes. right now thinking of that. Um, so yeah. No idea where he's been. He was declared dead about nine years later in nineteen ninety. Uh the possible thoughts, uh that people put on the internet, you know, maybe he wanted to um, d self delete. Maybe he wandered, got stuck somewhere, Even maybe hidden in the cave. Deleted, though, they'd find him. They'd yeah. absolutely yeah. find him. So his wife wrote a long letter uh, to the authorities just stating her total dissatisfaction with what, and what has to be reiterated again is this guy could not move fast. He needed help, he needed mm -hmm. assistance. There's no right. way he could have gone very far right. in that amount of time. And even if he fell down a crevasse, they would have gotten a scent. They would have found something. There was a massive search at the time. His the biggest tools search. would have been there. His yeah, tools would have been tools. Exactly. If it was an animal, you would see signs something. of that. The only sign of him being there was the rock, the areas that he picked with his pick. That was yeah. the only sign of him like being he there. he stepped into a portal. Like he stepped into Maybe. a portal. Maybe. And... It's wild. And like 
I don't think it's su- uh, self deletion because he no. was of um, I forgot which faith, but he's a reverend, so they oh, yep. usually mm-hmm. don't Catholic partake King. in that, right? Yeah. And uh, the other one that could have maybe even been that someone's like McSherry could have fabricated the story oh, he- and killed him, but they mm. still like okay. And they the, did have that's the only the other dogs. thing, but the why wouldn't the cops suspect that? Because the dogs would still find something now. It was hours before the first cop showed up for this, so mm-hmm. he disappeared in the afternoon. Cop first cop shows up at 7 30, first uh dogs show up at 11 30 that night. So there's hours, there's enough right. time to get rid of a body, but I'm guessing the cops would have thought about that. And the dogs, hopefully, the dogs would have found. They yeah. would have smelled them on him. They would have smelled. I mean, yeah, they would have found something. Let's 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 Hello. just uh, you know have a thought about it, right? He loads the body up in his truck. It's an unpaved road in the middle of a million acre forest. He drives for an hour and a half and gets rid of the body. Drives an hour and a half back. Gets there right before a cop arrives. The dogs show up a couple hours later. Would they even be able to? If you're driving that off sent that way, unless these are completely incompetent cops, you thought of it. I'm sure the cops would have thought of it and look for tracks. It's a good point. That's a good I point. Mean, driving off, you're leaving tracks. He could have even just did the deed way beforehand and then went called. there and then that's, that's a good point. Way even yep. before. But, but who knows? But why no. would he care? Yep. Unless, like, why? Did that's just, the only, like, they have a big time. argument over be. minerals. Maybe that's my beautiful mineral rock. Hey, you know uh, the ballad of Buster. Did they find the Arkenstone? Remember, (laughs) all right, Buster Scruggs, Scruggs, whatever. Where that guy found a a huge vein of gold, and then you know someone followed him and tried to kill him. It's like who knows, man? Maybe he found something. That's the best one, by the way. Yeah, Yeah, Tom Waits one was. was Yeah, that one. That's a that dark. That's really good. It dark. really is, dude. And I'm sure it happened all the time. Oh God, the Liam Neeson one is the worst. Oh yeah. Oh dude. It's crazy to think yeah. that if his his tools aren't there, no signs, no sense. Like if yeah. it's not, of course, McSherry, then what could it have been? You mentioned portal aliens. Who knows? Fifteen. It reminds minutes. me of that hunter. Remember remember that hunter? There was a group of them and they all lined up and walked out yeah. together and sat down for like an hour and the yeah. guy all the way at the end just gone. Just gone. Right? Mm-hmm. That's kind of I'm getting the same well, kind of vibes. Here. That's also uh, a commonality that police brings up is a lot of times it's somebody who falls behind. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they just, you know, and or is on the end. Or people goes thought ahead I was first. just like, there's that 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 kid. Um, I'm forgetting his name. The one from Idaho, the one that the first documentary is completely centered around. I forget his name. Poor kid's name. But the kid yeah, was like right behind like the parents. Scout. Then turn no, it was it was a Not the three-year-old. Oh, I remember that. Oh, okay, yes, yeah, yes, okay. at the campsite yeah, yeah. in Idaho, yeah, and yeah. The, just right behind the parents turned around, walked back to the granddad. Granddad right. looked down, looked up, gone Boom. forever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and that that's it's it's people who fall behind. I'm never gonna lose sight of my son in my forest. Uh-uh. 